Okay, so I know it's around about 15 minutes. I think I should um, be good for time here. But um, uh, Emery already kindly introduced the name of the talk today, so I won't, I won't repeat that information. I'll just get straight into the overview of this talk. Um, I'll first position myself. The name of the talk is Who's Doing It? Who's Worldview? So the reason for that is it's fundamental to understand who is enacting technology and for whom and for what purpose and through which lens. Um, I'll then talk a little bit about the role of technology as I see it in Indigenous language revitalization. Um, I'll then talk about the case of online language reclamation for my language, Scottish Gaelic. I'll then give an example of my doctoral uh, dissertation work uh, with uh, the example of the online community driven language reclamation project technology. Technology stands for traditional ecological knowledge and technology and it's a pilot project uh, with my fat married families in Anishinaabeg community. And then I'll wrap up uh, with some concluding remarks. So who am I? It's uh, Mr. Palmi Chiblo, Shay Gail Ahanam, Rura as Agus Hokemi on in Glasgow Alaba, Agus Shinyach Ransahi Ahanam on McGill University, Montreal, Agus Isma Ur Konyahu. Uh, so I introduce myself in my mother language, uh, which is Scottish Gaelic. Uh, my name is Paul Megan Chiblo. I am a Scottish Gael. I was born and raised in Glasgow, Scotland. Um, I'm currently a PhD candidate at McGill University, Montreal in educational studies with a focus on Indigenous language revitalization. <laughs> and it's very nice to be talking with you all today. Now, where am I? Importantly, I'd like to acknowledge um, where I'm speaking to you from today. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the land, the plants, the water, animals, and spirits. For thousands of years, Toronto has been the traditional land and territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and today is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. I'm very grateful to be speaking with you all and to have the opportunity to work and to live in this land. Miigwech, Agus Tapalev. So reasons for my research here. Um, first, it's informed by my own experiences growing up as a Scottish Gael in Glasgow, Scotland. My language, Gaelic, was not available to me in the education system. I couldn't study it. I couldn't learn about it. Um, Members of my family also recall being beaten for speaking the language in school um, as well. So that's also a little bit of context there. I for, and now I can speak fluently Spanish, French, English, um, Italian. However, <laughs> it's taken until this, well, the past couple of years to reclaim again my own language, Gaelic. Um, since meeting and marrying uh, my husband, who is Anishinaabe Ojibwe, we met in Glasgow, Scotland. I've learned more about the harms of colonization on the indigenous peoples of Turtle Island, or what is now known as North and Central America. These experiences have driven me to enact more or envisage more equitable education and language policy, and my research focuses on these areas. Uh, as well as decolonizing applied linguistics, social linguistics, and ecolinguistics. So a little bit on the role of technology here. With the advance of dominant colonial worldviews and languages, indigenous languages continue to be threatened and endangered. Uh, resources are often limited. For example, um, there is a lack of, let's say, trained um, or proficient teachers. However, many of the, of the setting of this is the fulfillment of colonial quote unquote standards. So there's a lot of red tape bureaucracy behind the scenes here, and it's unnecessarily difficult at times to gain the necessary quote unquote qualifications as well. So there's also that to be taken into consideration, as well as external standards and Western pedagogies may not meet the needs of the local indigenous communities themselves. So one common goal for Indigenous language revitalization initiatives is to promote intergenerational language transmission and use in the home context. Could the use of technology assist in this? But first of all, before I get into the question here a little bit, is how do we define technology and its role? So technology is not just machines, it's a result of practical applied knowledge, skills and networks which are constantly evolving and context dependent. The reason why I'm saying this is that technology is not neutral and is an extension of the knowledge and belief system we have used to create it. 
So examples of technology, just to bring up my point here, um, include writing systems such as pictographs, the pencil, the wampum belt, mass media, television, and more recently online and digital technologies such as internet and cell phones. So a fundamental issue here for the role of technology for indigenous language vitalization is to understand which or whose knowledge system is being enacted, who created the website, what is its purpose, how is the data being shared or stored online? This is crucial when we're talking about indigenous languages and cultures which have been disprivileged and disenfranchised by imperialistic, capitalistic and or colonial knowledge systems. So here is a table for example, I'll just leave it here. This is from a recent publication, Decolonizing the Digital Landscape, uh, the role of technology in indigenous language revitalization here to give some examples and contextualize um, how technology has been viewed and enacted. So moving on then, now that I've set up the scene a little bit, I'll talk about my own experience of learning Gaelic online. Um, as I put in, mentioned before in the positionality part of the talk, I was driven to reclaim Gaelic as a process of resistance against colonization and to self decolonize as well. In order to do this work, it's fundamental to go on that process of self decolonization and whatever that looks like for the individual, a huge part of it is a personal inward journey. So technology in this case has enabled me to connect more with home, uh, being here in Turtle Island, and to learn the language. And what I mean by that is I've had access to formal and informal learning opportunities. Now, I've spoken about this on a Build Leagued uh, blog post, and I think that was put online last year, a year or so go ago, where I detailed what it looked like for me to be reclaiming Gaelic online. Um, and I compared and contrasted Duolingual, the app, as we've all heard of, with learning in a community-based context. So I took classes with Kyolis, which is um, an organization in South Uist. It's a little island in the northwest of Scotland. And it's my home community. My mother was born and raised there. So I compared and contrasted those two elements, online Duolingual, versus learning face, not face to face on Zoom. And not surprisingly, I found Duolingo to be decontextualized without any content or relation to culture. Whereas the classes I took community based gave me more insights into not only the language, but how I relate to my mother tongue as well. So here's just an example of what the Keolis website looks like. They offer Gaelic language classes, also cultural events. Um, so it's not just about learning language, but language, culture, worldview is inseparable here. Um, even more recently, I've been taking courses at Sulmor Ostig. Um, this is a University of Highlands and Islands in uh, the Isle of Skye. Um, and I started taking classes there a year and a half ago. And I remember being so frustrated because I couldn't put together two or three words or a sentence in my own language. However, just two days ago, um, I got my second assessment back. And here you can see in the Twitter that I tweeted about it, I, I managed to write three paragraphs in Gaelic and speak about it as part of my oral exam. So that for me was a way for, this was all done online. I must stress that these classes again are done remotely via Zoom and learning remotely. So for me to reach this level in a year, I was very happy and pleased about in terms of a personal reclamation journey. And on the left is a post I saw today. I follow Gaelic groups um, on Twitter and Facebook. This one today was to wish everyone happy international model language to everyone. And this one is in a Scottish Gaelic here. And there's a quote, Canon Mughru uh, Agus Mughlui, um, the language of my tribe and my people here. So. Whatever your mother language is, we hope you can be proud of it and speak it whenever you can. Uh, so the affordances of technology, as I've stated before, have been very helpful. Um, there have been positive impacts. If it weren't for technology, I wouldn't have been able to connect or learn for the past, how long have we been in the pandemic now? Two years? So I wouldn't have been able to do anything. And, it, and I can't go flying back to Scotland every, I don't know, every week or two to go and take a course. So Zoom classes, for example, and learning online have been crucial for me and also cost effective. I've had accessibility to language learning materials and an online community of practice through Twitter and Facebook. 
More research, though, I would say needs to be done on pedagogies. How can we effectively teach and learn languages online, especially when it comes to Indigenous language acquisition in online environments? And on that note, I'll move now to the online community and driven language reclamation project technology. And this is part of my PhD work. So technology, traditional ecological knowledge and technology, this research is still ongoing and it seeks to explore the intersections between Anishinaabemwin, the Ojibwe language, traditional ecological knowledge and technology and all of those facets, how do they impact on intergenerational language transmission? As I said before in my positionality, I'm married in to an Anishinaabe community, so I, we did this work together in a community-led context project and everything was done online. Again, the whole project from start to, to, to the culmination was done remotely uh, using Zoom for all stages or, or, or online surveys to, to, for, to carry forward the project. So again, technology has been fundamental for this project. Um, so we looked to explore these factors together. We formed a language revitalization community uh, committee with um, members of my family and family friends taking a relational approach to people I had already met and we co-created a series of videos um, some fully immersive in the language and in community settings. So preliminary discussion and implications here. Participants shared how important the land and community is for Indigenous language revitalization. They stressed the relationship between the language, land, community, culture and identity. So again, just to compare and contrast with other methods of learning languages, let's say, for example, duolingual, you can see here it's a very different context and setting where land, community, culture, identity are inseparable from the language. So Elder and Anishinaabe Nation Language Commissioner Barbara Nolan and other participants in the project expressed how technology can be beneficial if implemented in a culturally and environmentally responsive manner to address the harms of colonization. So we also discussed the benefits of language immersion, being immersed in language and not through English, let's say, because English is, many of the participants shared that it's difficult to translate concepts and words and meanings in Anishinaabemwin into English. And so the benefits of language immersion here can be done also through technology. Benefits of embodied storytelling online, so using props, visuals, gestures, and more examples can be found, for example, on www.barbaranolan.com. And here's an example of the website. Barbara Nolan here uses storytelling online, fully immersive, to transmit meaning and concepts in Anishinaabemwin for language immersion. So technology here for the project, I'm exploring the potential of it as an immersive community-led approach for Indigenous language acquisition. And here's some excerpts from the videos that I will be able to share in full um, at the end of the project. However, this is just a screenshot here of uh, interaction in the language between the elder Anishinaabek language, uh, language Commissioner Barbara Nolan and Dr. Sue Bell Chibble here talking about Pharaoh the dog in the language and also giving cookies in the language here too. The videos were also filmed and recorded by the participants themselves. So not externally to really grasp onto that indigenous worldview and indigenous lens when we're using technology here. So just kind of coming towards the end of my short talk today, here we're kind of exploring the benefits of technology if it is used from a community led and community driven perspective and in the indigenous worldview. So there can be the value of local community directed and led projects for capacity building. So it can trickle out into how can we use technology for jobs in a language, websites in a language, street signs in Anishinaabemwin, for example. And also the stages and time involved in language acquisition from understander to fluent, or sorry, to proficient and to fluent here. I'm putting this in here because the videos are fully immersive, but the elder stressed that it takes time to learn a language. And this has implications for indigenous language acquisition. First, you become an understander by listening, which is why we did these videos in a conversational way that are fully immersive, because you may not understand everything immediately, but by listening and repeating to the natural conversations, you'll be able to become an understander before moving on to the later stages here in language acquisition. And here, just the idea of technology as a means to address colonial ideologies and language maintenance. 
language revitalization for indigenous languages is going to look very different for as opposed to typical ways of teaching French, for example, or English or Italian, where grammar approaches or rules, it's going to look very different from that. And technology, as I said before, needs to be rooted in indigenous worldview, community led and driven. So my conclusion here, just wrapping up, going back to my question that I posed, who's doing it and whose worldview? Technology can be helpful and useful for indigenous language maintenance, reclamation and revitalization. However, it's not a one size fits all. Um, it needs to be community driven, context dependent. Each community is going to look very different. And there's also a digital divide. Some people may not have access to technology or to broadband internet or to make films. But so there's these kind of issues here that we need to take into consideration. However, the main takeaway here is the importance of indigenous self-determination. Technology's role at every stage should be decided and led by the community to safeguard data sovereignty, for example. Where, what, what content is being shared? Where is it being stored? Who is watching this? For what purposes? So all of these questions also need to be taken into consideration. And again, just to stress, the transmission of the Indigenous worldview and knowledge immersively and in context is fundamental. And I'll just leave it here by saying more, more research, of course, is required in these areas. And I look forward to sharing more uh, of this project, for example, in the future. So thanks again for inviting me today. Ta palave, miigwech uh, for listening. Thanks. <laughs>